it is finally here. The Garmin ECG app for your Garmin watch allowing you to do an ECG has launched as of this very second. Now ECG stands for electrocardiogram and it's a way to go ahead and detect uh, rhythm issues with your heart, uh, either to validate your heart is just fine or to detect a certain type of rhythm. Uh, it does not detect a heart attack uh, and that's really, really important to understand. The idea behind that is if you have one of the symptoms seen right here, you can go ahead and crack it open on your watch, uh, do a quick test and determine whether or not you need to go forward next steps to a doctor. Like other watches in the market from Apple and Fitbit and Samsung, etc., uh, this is detecting AFib. That's the core focus of this particular feature. Now, getting to this point, like other companies, requires years of work. In this case, uh, clinical trials, you can actually see them on a website uh, from the US government, as well as FDA approval that you can also see on the website. In the next week, the FDA will actually kind of like give their test score, if you will, of Garmin. But at the end of the day, it is an FDA approved solution for what's effectively an over the counter device. Uh, meaning, the idea is that you have to be to operate this entire thing by yourself without a doctor. So the wording and all the kind of explanations has to be super clear on what it does and what it does not do. Now you'll notice it keeps saying app and not device. And that's because the actual piece that is approved is the ECG app on the watch and not really the whole watch itself. This is good because it allows them to go ahead and move it from watch to watch to watch over time to expand it to other watches. Now, certainly there are elements of that that depend on hardware in the watch that I'll get into in just a second, uh, but it's the exact same principle that Apple and others have done. And why that's also important is that that means the FDA is not certifying other things in the watch. They're just certifying the ECG app. So for example, they're not certifying general heart rate. That's kind of outside the bounds of this, whether it be in sports or otherwise. They're not certifying the SpO2 sensor in there. They're not certifying the sleep or the stress or anything else, it is purely does it detect an AFib rhythm uh, using ECG, and that is it. Uh, now, before we dive into this, a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting, useful, or something, just simply whack that like button in the bottom there. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, in order for this to work, you have to be in the US. At least you have to set it up in the US. Uh, that's because, again, regulatory problems or concerns. Uh, so the main thing is you need to have your phone with you on the Garmin Connect app, and you need to be in the US. And it's gonna detect whether or not you're in the US based on the phone's GPS and Wi-Fi position. Now, this is just for the first setup. Once you have it set up, you can fly away wherever you want and go ahead and start using it. Anyways, assuming you're in the US, you have a compatible device uh, and updated firmware and an updated Garmin Connect mobile app, then on the Garmin Connect mobile app, it'll show you an ECG, basically like welcome and onboarding screen. It'll also confirm that you're over 22 years old and then it'll walk you through kind of some quick information behind it before activating it on your watch. Uh, now, right now on the watch itself, you'll see it in the apps area, the same place that you would choose a run or anything else. This is not a Garmin Connect IQ app. This is native functionality built into the watch. It just happens to show up in the apps area. Now, once you've selected that app on your watch, do ensure that the same wrist that you selected in the settings, uh, whether it's left or right, is the wrist that it's on. That actually is fairly important here. And then you go ahead and take your index and your thumb and put it on the bezel. And then over the next 30 seconds, it'll do a measurement. And you can actually see the little waveform going the entire time. When it's complete, the results will show up instantly. There is no cloud processing. This happens totally on the watch itself. It'll tell you whether it detected a AFib rhythm. Uh, it's also where you can go ahead and add any symptoms if you wanted to. So if you had symptoms, and and that's why you did the ECG. You can select those symptoms there. And then all of that is saved on the watch as well as synced to Garmin Connect Mobile, so your smartphone app. Uh, and then from the smartphone app, you can also go ahead and export it out as a PDF. The ultimate idea is that if you did have an AFib event, you could take this PDF and show it to a doctor, uh, show the symptoms that you may have had at the time, and they could take the next steps from there. Now, about now, you're probably asking, which watches is this on today? And as of right this second, this is only on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, uh, this watch right here. Uh, and that's the only hardware that Garmin has on all the watches they've uh, released so far that has capable hardware. Uh, and there's two pieces to that. Now, uh, the first piece is having uh, basically a metal bezel of some sort to act as a conductor when you go ahead and touch the bezel from the other side. Uh, and the second piece is having a little metal ring around the outside of the optical sensor. Uh, so if you look right here side by side between the Venue 2 Plus and my Epix that I have on my other wrist, uh, you'll see the Epix does not have that metal ring on the back side of the optical sensor, uh, around the optical sensor right there. That means it is lacking the physical hardware inside of it to make this happen. No amount of software updates will make it happen for the Epix or any other watch out there, not the Phoenix 7, etc. Uh, so essentially, it's only the Venue 2 Plus and new watches going forward that Garmin has put that hardware in. And of course, Garmin has not released which new watches will have it, but I'd probably guess just about every new watch is going to have it, at least over a certain price point of probably 300 bucks or so. Uh, and it makes sense because that's the same kind of pattern that we've seen from other companies as well. 
Now, for those of you outside the U.S., you may be wondering when you're going to get it, and that's really going to depend on the approval process in each country. Uh, some countries will take the FDA approval and just say, yep, that's good, cleared, good to go. Other countries, for example, the European Union, have their own processes. Uh, and Garmin noted that, in particular, the EU process uh, for this changed in 2021 and changed quite substantially, uh, making it a much more thorough and long, drawn-out process. So devices going through that process today are going to take a little bit longer than they would in the past. Uh, Garmin would not release details on any given region other than to confirm that things are in the plans. I asked, is Europe in the plans? And they said, yes, there is a plan for Europe, but they wouldn't say whether or not they were at the beginning of the plan or like just about to have approval. And that's partly because in most cases, a country's prohibit uh, device manufacturers from stating where they are in that approval process in order to ensure that people don't think a device is already approved when it's not. Now, again, a lot of people are probably wishing was on other watches. And I think in due time, we will see that with new hardware. But again, there's not the right hardware in other watches today to make that happen. So it's not something that software can simply upgrade. But it is in Garmin's best interest to roll this out quickly to new hardware variants down the road, if for no other reason than to match their competitors like Fitbit and Apple that have it in lower price point devices. With that, if you did find this interesting or useful, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.